Hey everybody, Seven here. And thank you so much for joining me in Freebie Fridays. This time I've got a strange kind of first person puzzle game. This one's called The Cursed Amulet. And as usual, I've messed around a little bit with it beforehand. Um, I got a little bit about halfway through the game, I think. It's a really interesting first person puzzle game. And I saw a few complaints, I guess, about how controls and puzzle solving interaction, there's no tutorial in it. It just sort of drops you in. But as I started playing it more and more, I found that to be almost a benefit instead of a drawback or a detriment. So anyway, let's just get into it. So you start off, you're just a treasure hunter, essentially. Now, the ground does have some very strange um, particle effects going on right now. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I'm sure I probably messed something up with the graphic settings because I was trying to get this to a high res for a good recording. But if you just bear with the entry scene here, it, it goes away once we get into the actual gameplay. And it actually looks way better than this. And here we are in it. Like I said, one of the complaints I was seeing in the Steam comments was there wasn't really a guide or interaction tutorial or anything like that. So it's a puzzle game. And the very first thing you see is a door, an obvious hole, and an obvious gem to pick up. So what I had to do, and this does have full controller support, which I always really enjoy. You really do need to familiarize yourself with the way that the controller setup works, because not all of these are quite intuitive like the interact for e on keyboard and jump for space that's pretty intuitive that's that's pretty standard stuff but on a controller scheme rt for interact and you know crouching with lb those maybe not so much i haven't found yet a, a reason for the zoom in or zoom out but i'm sure as you progress along you'll you'll find something but it was here in this first room that I needed to uh, check the, the control scheme. And then again in the second room, because I had quite an issue in the second room. And I'll show you in a sec. All right, so we have a circle X'd out and a rectangle X'd out. The control sticks are a little finicky, as you saw that I was kind of jumping around a little bit there. This room also gave me some shenanigans just because the difference between the walk speed and the run speed is almost imperceptible, but you need it in order. <laughs> but you needed it to get through this part. And like you just saw, there isn't really a, a death animation or anything. There's just a an unhappy tone to let you know that you just screwed up. Visually, the game, aside from that entry level, you know, walking across the bridge there, it's got some very cool visuals and some really atmospheric sound and music to it too. This is another game that is very much on the short side, as I'm starting to see a trend with uh, how I'm going through this series. A lot of the games that I'm finding that I'm having the most fun with, they are also on the shorter side. All right, so this one seems pretty obvious. Bunch of gems, obvious missing hole, another path to go. All right, so just snag our little gem here. The coolest thing about this is it even supports controller rumble. So as I'm interacting with things and getting things right, I can even feel the controller pulse. Even games on Steam that I've found that have uh, full controller support, I've never seen any kind of rumble support. You always gotta love when you're playing a puzzle game and the door shuts behind you. This one I thought was going to be 
much harder than it was. Although because of the fact of RNG, this one might take me a few tries. I got kind of lucky on the first one. All right, yellow, white, green. As you can see, it's just a Simon game. So remember the colors and good luck. Yellow, white, green, other yellow, or pink or whatever that is. absolutely thrilled at myself for getting that first try on two separate playthroughs. I absolutely hate Simon games and I'm completely trash at them. So for me to get that twice in a row. Now in this room, I was actually really, really happy that there wasn't tutorial stuff. And the controller vibrates that entire time. That is so cool. So when I first got to this room, I just was randomly interacting with things until they started to work. And I was having some pretty good success with it. And I'm just, you know, spinning all of these little wheels here. Just sort of hoping for the best. And I was getting some pretty good success with it. Just... You know, randomly, hodgepodge, turning things around. I had no clue what I was doing, as I'm just showing you right now. It wasn't until I got to either this one or I think it was this one. I was just kind of brute forcing my way through things until I realized, well, what, what was the signifier that was causing this to, to function. And I, I kept looking at the colors. It took me a bit longer than I'd like to admit that it was the shapes. So even though there's different colors here, the colors are irrelevant because there's different shapes to the different colors. So you see like this blue is a pentagon, but that doesn't mean that all blues are pentagons because there's also a pentagon over here that's one of the darker ones. I think you can probably infer that the darker one might need to be the one that you end on. That part I'm not sure about. This one started to get kind of complicated. There we go. It definitely starts to give you a pretty steep uh, progression. And you really have to start paying attention to the sizes and shapes of things. But I kind of like games that give you a bit of a steeper learning curve to it. So I'd quit at this point. I had just solved this, uh, this last puzzle here. And I hadn't gone through the final room because I wanted to at least have some things that were a surprise to me as well. I'm not going to be completely finishing the game because this, I I don't like doing that in the Freebie Fridays because I want to leave at least something for people to explore on their own. So I think I'm going to try to get this last room cleared, which would leave, I think, three more after this. So if I can get this cleared out, then the rest is going to be up to you. Okay, I've seen this before. This is Indiana Jones. Uh. Okay, I just have to figure out why it's Indiana Jones. Green. Oh, maybe... Okay, maybe it's green. Okay, I went from green to green. That wasn't it. Wait. Oh, the wall? Did the wall change? Wait a minute. Oh, now we need the zoom. Oh, wait. Some of them are lit up. Okay, so... The, the purple hexagon 
is dim. All right. So, okay. Okay, so I have access to... Okay, so the color and the shape are actually independent of each other. So those teal ones are always going to be oct octagons? All right, there's a purple. Oh, yeah, okay, we got a clear path. So... Nope. Had a clear path. All right, so green, red, and yellow. Or no, not green. Teal. Teal, red, and yellow. Oh, we got a good path here. Okay, so teal, red, teal. Okay, so red, yellow, teal. Okay, so teal, yellow, red. Uh, teal, teal, yellow, red. Okay, so teal, teal, yellow, red. Yeah, and then teal, yellow, and we're done. Um. Nice. Now, I am definitely going to keep playing this because I really want to see the ending of this. But I think I'm going to leave it here because I want to have at least a couple of rooms unspoiled by me for you. So let's go check out the Steam page on this one, because it's uh, going to be my tr tradition on this, I think. So the game is published and developed by Crystal Creative Games. And they're another one with only one game to their name. But this is very fascinating game, and I've been very into the progression and the visual style of it. The music and the audio has been really just doing such wonders for the ambiance as well. It's been really cool. And as you can see, single player, Steam achievements, and full controller support going so far as to even have rumble feature if your controller has it, which I'm pretty sure pretty much every controller does at this point. But even games that I've played with full controller support, having the rumble support has been very rare. And you can see even the specifications are not super egregious. Very little storage space. Not terrible on the RAM either. Even the processor and graphics card required aren't really that bad. So this has been a little dip into the Cursed Amulet. I'd love to know what you guys thought about this, and I'd love to know if you guys picked it up and uh, if you played all the way through it. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me in another Freebie Fridays, and I hope to see you in the next one. This is Seven. Bye.